Excellency, Mr. President and Mrs. Nancy Reagan and members of the delegation. The current visit of Your Excellency, Mr. President, is indeed very short. However, this doesn't reduce the great significance that we both attach to it. We attach even greater importance to this visit after Your Excellency, and Mr. President and I, as well as our ministers and high-ranking officials, have exchanged views this morning. We have viewed together a very wide range of issues, either related to the bilateral relations between our two nations and countries, or to the regional as well as international questions. Your Excellency's present visit coincides with the state of our world, which faces various difficult complicated and vulnerable problems, both from the security and economic points of view. This situation does not benefit anybody, particularly it is disadvantageous to the developing countries such as Indonesia. The United States as a great power has the opportunity and ability to give the best possible contribution to the creation of a world more peaceful more advanced, more prosperous, and more equitable than the one that has been enjoyed by mankind up to the present. As a country that pursues an independent and active foreign policy, Indonesia appeals to all parties to refrain themselves and to take adequate steps in creating peace and stability in the world. Indonesia also earnestly appeals to all countries, big or small, very advanced or developing, rich or not rich, to cooperate shoulder to shoulder as equal and responsible partners to establish a new international economic order that ensures progress and justice to all nations in the world. It is in this context, Your Excellency, Mr. President, that I see the summit conference of advanced industrial countries, which will be attended by Your Excellency in Tokyo in the next few days. I hope that the summit conference between the advanced industrial countries shall not merely discuss the interest of the advanced countries. Hopefully, it would also pay attention to the interest of all nations all countries and all world communities for the sake of the survival of mankind and the best interest of the world, especially at a time when the world is facing difficult and decisive moments today. Your Excellency, Mr. President, an American journalist has written a book entitled Revolt in Paradise, which describes the heroic episode of the Indonesian people's struggle during our war for independence in this island. The Indonesian translation of this famous book is entitled Revolt in Peaceful Island. Hopefully, Your Excellency, Mr. President and Mrs. Nancy Reagan, as well as all members of the delegation, would enjoy an atmosphere of paradise and peace as they des described this island during the three-day stay on this Isle of the Gods. In conclusion, allow me to invite the distinguished guests to raise your glass and join me in a toast to the health of His Excellency the President of the United States and Mrs. Nancy Reagan, to the progress and prosperity of the American people, and to the everlasting friendship between the United States of America and the Republic of Indonesia. Thank you. Now, response by His Excellency the President of the United States of America, which will be concluded by a toast.
President, Mrs. Suato, ministers, ladies and gentlemen, Nancy and I are delighted to be with you tonight. It's a great honor to be visiting Indonesia again and to receive the warm hospitality and gracious welcome for which the Indonesian people are justly famous. I remember how much I enjoyed my visit to Indonesia in December of 1973 when I was governor of California and here representing our president at the time. I also recall with pleasure, Mr. President, your visit to the United States in October of 1982. I remember well that in your dinner toast, you suggested, like it or not, we must consider the world as the common homeland of all nations. Well, Mr. President, the American people are honored that as citizens of the world, we count as our close and trusted friends, the people of Indonesia. Americans see Indonesia as an impressive success story. In just over 40 years, this vast and beautiful nation has made enormous strides. We Americans appreciate that the path to national union is not easy for a country that spans over 3,000 miles and is scattered across more than 13,600 islands. The challenges you face in developing your country with its wide expanse and rich diversity are not unlike the obstacles and hazards Americans faced in settling and developing our own country. Despite regional diversity, Indonesia, under your leadership, Mr. President, is a united country, a country that is assuming an increasingly significant role in the region and in the world. Your commitment to Indonesian resilience, drawing on your own resources and your own traditions and institutions, serves to enrich your people materially and spiritually. In the United States, our governing institutions celebrate the wisdom of a balance of powers that works out to shape our laws and traditions. Indonesia's governing philosophy of consultation and consensus is different from our own, yet its ultimate goal is blending diversity into national unity. Even though our methods of government differ, the friendly and open nature of the discussions we've had here and when you were in Washington reflect the positive and constructive day-to-day, year-to-year conduct of relations between our two countries. I want to congratulate you, Mr. President, on Indonesia's achievement in reaching self-sufficiency in rice production. This is an enormous accomplishment of which you can be justifiably proud. Having moved so far, so fast, in providing ample food resources is another indication of your government's effective management. The attainment of rice self-sufficiency is just one indication that Indonesia's economic development program has been wide wide-reaching and impressive. This program of growth and advancement has been directed toward bringing the benefits of development to all levels of society. Mr. President, not too long ago you said, it is impossible to reach equ equity in development, impossible to wipe out poverty if there is no economic growth. Well, we applaud that emphasis. We have a saying in the United States that rather than talk about how to divide up a small pie, let's work and build and bake a bigger pie so everyone can have a bigger slice. Mr. President, we've been happy to cooperate with you in a number of social and economic fields, including food production, off-farm employment, private sector development, and health care. We look forward to continuing our work together. In this regard, we have found the growing cooperation between our two nations in the field of science and technology to be particularly beneficial. Indonesia is also to be congratulated, Mr. President, for its humanitarian policy of granting first asylum to almost 100,000 refugees from Indochina. The international community and the American people applaud Indonesia for its generous response to the plight of these unfortunate people who are seeking freedom and refuge. Many of these refugees have also resettled on our shores and have enriched the fabric of American life. The plight of these friends in distress is very important to Americans. 
I want to express to you, Mr. President, my personal appreciation for the sacrifice and consideration your government has shown in this humanitarian endeavor. I am struck by how our discussions have reflected a mutuality of interests and a harmony of views. And I am confident the spirit that has prevailed here will enable us to forge even stronger relations in the years ahead. And I would ask you all to join me then in toasting the people of Indonesia, their distinguished leader, President Suato, and the friendship between the Indonesian and American people. Dinner is served.